record the minutes for legal purposes, and this is the only way to pick up audio. Good afternoon to our other commissioners and to our um, interested guests. The Historic Preservation Commission is a nine-member board appointed by the City Council and serves on a voluntary basis without compensation. The purposes of the Commission are to promote the educational, cultural, economic, and general welfare of the City through the preservation and protection of buildings, sites, structures, areas, and districts of historic significance and interest through the preservation and enhancement of local historic, architectural, archaeological, and aesthetic heritage found in the city. Through the maintenance of the distinctive character of the city's historic districts and through the promotion and enhancement of the city's historic and aesthetic attraction to tourists and visitors. I would like to take this opportunity to ask the other commissioners to introduce themselves. And tonight, I will start from my left and your right. James Long. Brian Mann. Carol King. Dallas Hanbury. Cindy Keeping. And my name is Richard Bailey, and I have the honor of serving as the chair of the Montgomery Historic Preservation Commission. And I'd also like to um, have our land use staff to introduce themselves, and we'll start from my right and your <coughs> left. Christy Anderson. Paula Richardson. Thank you very much. As we begin our deliberation this afternoon, I'd just like to reflect on the preservation leadership class of last week at Huntington College, and i also like to acknowledge the role that Ms. Christy Anderson played in coming up with the idea, and um, <clears throat> Ms. Paula Richardson was there last week and helped us out, and I think the first session was an overwhelming success, and i also like to thank the members of this commission who took time from their busy schedules to come out, and I'd like to encourage all of us to um, help us with the upcoming meetings that we have. Ladies and gentlemen of the commission you have before you, the minutes of our March 12, 2019 meeting. Is there a motion for the adoption of those minutes? I move we accept the minutes. Is there a second? Yes, I will second it. All right. Is there any unreadiness? All those in favor, let it be known by a show of hands. Unanimous, Paula. Thank you so very much. Restoration of the month as we move along with our agenda. 447 South Goldweight Street, Cottage Hill um, Annex. This is for May. And now we'll have our committee reports. The revamping the historic sign program, the working committee will have uh, a report given by one of the members. I understand that we have some persons here regarding the restoration. Um, would you please approach the microphone and identify yourself? Mike, would you pull up the pictures yeah. that should be on the next page, next several Roman pages? Roman numeral two. Uh -huh. Hello, I'm April Hi. Hampton. How y'all doing? Fine. Your name again? I'm sorry? Your name again? April Hampton. Okay. Good afternoon. This is April Hampton. She and her husband, Justin, um, have done the restoration at 447 South Goldweight Street, which is in the Cottage Hill Annex, um, just off the Five Points area. Um, and Christy has some remarks, as you can see, from this is some before shots. These are from 2009 when I went through the property with the previous owner. Um, and all I can say <laughs> is that when the Hamptons purchased the property, it didn't look any better. Hmm. Mercy. Courage, courage, courage. It certainly looks better now. It does. <laughs> and this was recently featured on a landmark uh, foundation open house program, and it was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. 
And most of the work had been done, I believe, by the homeowners themselves, right? Well, I, I project managed and designed, but I had, I could not do it. <laughs> I, I, I picked up a paintbrush from time to time. But, you know, I was uh, very much involved with the day-to-day -day project management. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Wow. Oh, you want to talk? I'm sorry. Yeah. Say hello. You want hello. To <laughs> hello. So uh, we recommend this for the May preservation, uh, restoration of the month. And I know it, it's been a while since y'all have seen one of these, so this would be a motion and a second to recommend it for the I May. That we um, approve 447 South Gold Waite Street, located in the Cottage Hill Annex Historic District, as restoration of the month for May 2019. The second. I will second that, yes. Any unreadiness, questions, comments? All those in favor, let it be known by a show of hands. Unanimous vote. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all so much. Thank you, too. We have some more people in the audience. If uh, some of you like to approach uh, the microphone while we're letting people come and uh, say a few words, Anyone else in the audience like to approach the microphone and say a few words? Yes, come right on. Um, thank you, Mr. Bagley. My name is Michael Panhorst. I'm the executive director of the Landmark Foundation in Montgomery and Old Alabama Town. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to comment, uh, bring to your attention a concern of the preservation community that uh, is there's growing awareness about a threat of demolition to the sanctuary of the 1847 Old First Presbyterian Church at 52 Adams Avenue. Um, as more and more people are becoming aware, the First Baptist Church has uh, proposed to the Architectural Review Board that they demolish the sanctuary of this building and build a new community service or caring mission uh, there uh, that would accommodate uh, what they're doing in other parts, in various parts of the old building, not just the 1847 portion, but um, uh, an early 20th century and, uh, piece. And without going into any great detail, I just want you to know that last Wednesday at a joint meeting of Landmarks Foundation's executive board and advisory board, uh, there was a motion passed unanimously to endorse me to write to Pastor uh, Dr. J. Wolf at First Baptist Church and uh, respectfully request that First Baptist Church reconsider their plans to demolish the sanctuary of the 1847 uh, Old First Presbyterian Church building. And in addition, uh, I wrote to offer the assistance of landmarks and sort of broadly the preservation community to help First Baptist Church identify some alternatives to the demolition of this sanctuary so that the building might be saved and reused to accommodate the needs of First Baptist Church. So uh, I delivered that letter to uh, First Baptist uh, yesterday and uh, just want this body to know that Landmarks is very concerned about the future of Montgomery's oldest extant church building uh, that um, has a, a lot of merit. I won't go into all the details here because time is tight, but I uh, appreciate the opportunity to share our concerns about <clears throat> this historically significant building and um, what is proposed demolition um, that will have an opportunity to play out through the process of the Architectural Review Board and uh, hope that there will be more discussion um, as awareness of the plans to demolish the sanctuary um, become more broadly known. 
If, if, if I may, I have a couple of qu well, I have several questions that come to mind. Um, number one, how imminent is the threat to the building? Um, my understanding is that the uh, First Baptist Church has submitted an application to the Architectural Review Board to demolish the sanctuary, and that proposal uh, should receive its uh, first consideration at the end of April when the ARB meets. What is the state of the present structure, and why would they not tr attempt to refurbish the space? Um, good question. Um, there is a difference of opinion uh, regarding the condition of the current structure. According to my understanding from speaking with several people who have gotten into this conversation um, in recent weeks because the preservation community has only become aware of this plan uh, over the last couple of months. And it is my understanding that the First Baptist Church has a uh, study that they claim shows that the cost of, quote, restoring the church would be prohibitively expensive. Not that restoration is the only option, but that is an argument that we have seen um, from First Baptist Church. Um, we have also seen from uh, Dick Hudgens, probably Alabama's premier historical architect, uh, who went through the building's basement and attic, um, his assessment, uh, which was conveyed in a letter to a group of people who are loosely identified as friends of Old First Presbyterian Church, um, his opinion was that there were no substantial, um, there was no substantial damage, there was no, um, he said nothing that he saw that caused him concern about the stability of the building at this time. Christy, um, if I may ask you a couple of questions. Um, first of which, doesn't the Architectural Review Board fall under, uh, aren't we related to the Architectural Review Board in some way? You're kind of like cousins. Cousins. Um. Oh, the other question is, um, What is the timeline for a demolition? If they go to the ARB and get approval, is it over and done with? Um, if they go to the ARB, as the submission stands now, I suspect it would be delayed because um, some of the information that was requested to be part of their submission packet was not submitted. And under the ARB guidelines, to request a demolition, you also have to propose a suitable replacement plan. And if they're not happy with that replacement plan, it's, they're going to send them back to the drawing board. Um, if they had submitted everything, all of the information that would allow the ARB to make an informed decision, they could still delay a demolition for six months and ask them to um, explore other options, other alternatives for the property, alternative uses, alternative owners, um, or other ways to incorporate the building into a new building plan. So, Did they have a direct appeal to the city council? Should the ARB uh, put up a roadblock? For a reversal of a decision, it is supposed to go to circuit court. Circuit court, okay. City Council is only supposed to determine if the board has overstepped its authority. Okay. Um, that is not always how it has played out when it's come to City Council. Um, that said, um, the, 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 I met with the mayor yesterday and he was going to speak with Jay Wolf as well to talk about the possibility of coming up with a, a compromise <coughs> plan. One uh, final question, and I'll clear the floor here. Um, you know, a lot of structures in Montgomery that are protected, preserved, have a 
tie to a significant historical event or a significant person. Uh, is there any such yes, yes, tie sir. to this, this, this structure? Yes, sir. Um, there is strong evidence, it's not a signed document, but there is strong evidence that uh, Horace King, uh, the freedman, bridge builder, stair builder, self-supporting structure builder, architect extraordinaire, who was in Montgomery um, in the 1840s, is strong evidence that he is responsible for the construction of the twin spiral self-supporting stairs in the vestibule of the church. And I should say that First Baptist has proposed to keep the vestibule and the stairs and the, stair ta the bell tower crenellations on that part of it, but that's 15 or percent of the total building. We hope that First Baptist Church will uh, reconsider their plan and will save the sanctuary. Um, they say they want to build a building that's got big open spaces so they can do what they want to do. Well, here's a great big open space. And as many of you know, um, historic preservation generally is more economical than new construction, at least in the hard dollar phase, um, where you're tearing something down and replacing it, not to mention the savings by not sending uh, building material to the dump. Uh, are resal or salvaging it. And so um, it's a, you know, a, a complex issue. I'm sure there are other concerns. Uh, uh, it may be, and, and I really haven't talked this through with, with other uh, scholars like Bob Gamble, who has um, been doing the research, some research and providing information about this, this building. But it's entirely possible that um, that Horace King was also responsible in the construction of the building as a whole. The huge uh, heavy timber construction in this uh, sanctuary um, looks kind of like bridge trusses. Um, and uh, so, so he may be associated with more than just the stairs. But this is not a proven fact, it's, uh, but, but it is a possibility. Uh, so yes, there's, there's that connection to a very important individual. Uh, King built the spiral stairs in the state capitol and then served in the legislature. It was also, um, John Fye was a, a well-known builder in the mid 19th century as well, <clears throat> who was responsible True. for the construction of the church. And I believe, and I'm gonna look at Collier here, didn't the the church serve as a shelter when the um, Freedom Riders came through and were attacked around the corner, or not? Okay. Would you come to the microphone so we can hear you? <clears throat> Um, so the question that I was asked is, was the church used as a shelter during the Freedom Rides attack in 1961? Um, that has always been general, like the general understanding, um, especially with the Historic Commission, which owns the bus station uh, across Court Street there. Um, recently, that's come up for debate, and Dr. Bailey, I'm, I'm not sure if you are a part of that, or you might know the answer to that question right off the top of your head, uh, but it, it's always... If it, if it wasn't a shelter, at the very least, it was a witness. Um, it, was, it was used to, to cover the attackers uh, before they attacked the bus, uh, and in the chaos afterwards, it, it, it's likely that it could have been. Um, but if there's strong evidence to that, I'm not aware of it. Now, now I'm not sure who said it, but Christy, did you say it's the oldest remaining uh, church structure from that era or something along those lines? Um, it is certainly the oldest church in Montgomery. So um, what I'm hearing is there are multiple um, historical... Yeah, there, there, there are multiple hooks here. I mean, it, yeah. it's... And it's a rare church type that remains in the state of Alabama. Um, that, that gothic... So in other words, there are many contributing factors. Right. Yeah, if we start to add yeah. them up. And, yeah. and it, it might seem like it's a little out of the way today just because of the AT&T building and, being, and, and the federal courthouse where it is, but I mean, it was a prime location. Mm -hmm. but, but in the end, we have no power to stop this. 
all we can do at the most is make a resolution correct you you can do that i mean it, that's it, where i think i, mean, I am you're, you're you know, a resolution that can be presented to the architectural review mm -hmm. board as part of kind of the counter argument to Here, here's the my petition. quandary as a member of this commission i'd love to see some photos or actually yeah. go look at it but yeah. it's private property and i don't know would they are there photos we could we go a, look you at know it what? that's a good question we got a PowerPoint. <laughs> we do? You want to see it? Yeah. Sure. It's equipped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah now, may I Chris, add? Do, do you have the one that's BG on? Yes. Um, do you have Bob BG? You got Okay. Um, may I add, while Christy is doing this, that uh, James Fuller at the Montgomery County Historical Society and Pat Clark, who is the uh, new executive director, <laughs> Um, have done some really good work to pull some information together and I'd like to present to you uh, three pages of information that you may choose to copy and distribute as you please um, and these are copies of documents that a committee of three people representing the friends of Old First Presbyterian Church delivered to Dr. J. Wolf, the pastor of First Baptist and it, it's just a brief um, summary statement about <clears throat> the uh, importance of the building and uh, a copy of Dick Hudgens' letter. Uh, but I'm happy to provide that for the, for the record. And I, I do want to say that some conversation is, has begun between First Baptist and, uh, Ulfer and uh, the preservation community now that their proposal has been submitted. And there was a little conversation before, but, but it, not much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you, do you want me to, or Collier, to sure. comment on these images or yeah. uh, just very quickly? Uh, you can, and then we'll hear from our new director. Okay. Um, yes. So here's Old First Presbyterian Church, and please note here the crenellated uh, skyline, the bell tower, and uh, notice that there is a lot of building uh -huh. on my left, uh -huh. you know, on uh, the uphill side of the old church building. The, the square tower and the crenellated wall of the sanctuary, that is the 1847 portion. Uh, there's a, uh, an aerial view that will show that this is less than one-third of yes. the total building that is uh, slated for demolition. Slow down, so, slow down. What's, what's the 1847 part? This piece that you're looking at right here, the bell tower, and then there are four uh, Gothic windows. Right. Um, that was built in 1847. That little brick component on the, on the back side is an 1880s mm -hmm. piece that sort of wraps around the apse of the building. Um, so let's see, there's a detail of the uh, ogive arch, the pointed Gothic arch uh, on one side of the front door. We'll see this again momentarily. Uh, that, that's the window on the staircase. So th this is a view in the attic of those uh, massive heavy timber trusses that are uh, up there and a, a brick arch, it's looking up the side of the brick and then there's a, a, a round arch uh, that uh, supports part of the roof. Sorry to interrupt. If we could back up one slide. Can somebody do that? Yeah. Oh, well, the window. I just wanted to make the point that <clears throat> this is very unique brickwork surrounding this window yeah. and perhaps it, it hasn't been mentioned that uh, John P. Phi, who was the builder of this church, also owned a brickyard, and we believe it was his brick masons, both male and female, enslaved members of society who did this work. Wow. And it's very unique for that reason, and all the more special, I think, because it is fabulous brickwork right. in the whole construction. So I just wanted to note that. Almost 200 years Ma'am, before you uh, leave, would you give us the pleasure of identifying yourself so that everybody in Southeast Alabama will know who you are. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dr. Bailey. I'm Pat Clark, Patricia G. Clark. I am the new 
Executive Director of Montgomery County Historical Society. Uh, I work with James Fuller to transition so that he can someday retire. <laughs> and I hope to be able to follow in his footsteps. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And because one of the things that uh, we want to do, whenever someone uh, comes to this area, and that person is a part of the preservation community, his history community, we want to let that person know there is an implied invitation for that person to come before us and just let everybody in South Central Alabama know that uh, that person is in uh, within our midst. And so we want to take this opportunity to welcome you to Montgomery, <clears throat> and we hope you stay here for at least 55 years. <laughs> Pray God. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank so you much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. So here's a portrait of Horace King, and here are two views of one of the spiral stairs. Just I notice that it's self-supporting, uh, sort of a flying, uh, flying staircase. And if you go ahead on the slides, these are views of the original sanctuary. The view on um, my left is looking towards the altar, and the view on the right is looking towards the back of the church. And that balcony is, um, I believe that is the original balcony here. The organ was added later, um, and the interior has been modified since these images uh, were made, but let's move ahead. Um, this um, is more or less what the sanctuary looks like now with the altar, except that here you have uh, the woodwork is painted white, and if we move on forward, and the organ has been relocated. Um, this slide uh, talks about the, um, this church was the, the earliest Gothic Revival church building in Alabama in 1840. It started in 44, 1844 finished in 1847. And it was, it's among the 10 oldest surviving Gothic Revival churches in the South. Uh, the Gothic Revival began uh, with church buildings in New England around 1815. It took a while for that um, style to transition into the South. But as Bob Gamble has pointed out, this is a really important building for the transmission and influence of this uh, Gothic style, which is so closely associated with religious architecture because of the association between the Gothic um, style and the Middle Ages and the Gothic cathedrals. So moving on, uh, here's that church in New Haven, Trinity on the Green, 1816. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is uh, St. Patrick's Church in New Orleans, only about five years older than uh, our church, the old First Presbyterian Church here. <clears throat> Next. Um, this slide illustrates on the bottom those two, you know, a sort of a country church on my left and Government Street Presbyterian Church on the right. Um, basically, classical revival structures. Uh, in contrast with the Gothic revival of Old First Presbyterian, which you see uh, in the, the image at the top. Next. There's uh, the west face, the west facade. This is what you see from near the Greyhound bus station. Uh, and so that red brick portion on my right, uh, where that white truck is parked, um, that piece of the building is 1880s. <clears throat> Next. This is an aerial view that's most telling about the scale of this uh, structure. You see the crenellated roof line of the 1847 portion of the building in the lower center part of the slide. And to my right, uh, there is a uh, sort of a U-shaped section that wraps around the apse of the church. So that section there, uh, there's a white truck parked in the lot there. It's sort of a T. Uh, that's the 1880s portion of the building. Immediately east of that, to the top of the slide, uh, there's a section that was built sometime around 1900, I think. And then uh, on Adams Avenue and Perry Street, you see South Perry at the very top, that piece of the building was built 
um, around 1950. And so the proposal, as we understand it, uh, calls for the demolition of all, mm. all of this church building to rebuild uh, a new structure that um, is not as large in footprint as the total footprint of the existing building surrounding that cloister in the center. You see where the shadows are there? I can't point from here, but um, there is a, a, a cloister um, directly above the uh, 1840, thank you, right, right there. And so you can see that the 1847 portion of this building is, what, 20% of the total structure, maybe 25? I mean, it's, it is a relatively small part um, of the whole. So uh, we are hopeful that um, First Baptist will reconsider their plans to demolish the sanctuary and um, find a way to uh, use it in a constructive fashion. There are just a couple more slides. Um, here's an example. Would you come to the microphone, yeah, yeah, please? Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you could go back to that aerial view one more time. It, it should be pointed out from my understanding that the cost estimate to maintain the building that First Baptist has cited uh, as being cost prohibitive or burdensome is for the entirety of that building. And what we're sitting here discussing right now is, like Dr. Panhorst was saying, roughly 20% of what's there. Um, it, it, what? uh, yeah, yes, and then there's also, a, they cited $2 million that they spent over a 20 year period to maintain that entire footprint, not just the 1847 sanctuary. Uh, I, I think that's something that we've we've really failed to discuss here and, and, and point out in our conversations with First Baptist that what they're citing is the entirety of that church and what we're talking about is the 1847 sanctuary. Okay. Uh, in fact, the entire structure is uh, locally designated and the entire structure is on the National Register of Historic Places as part of a historic district. Um, but the concerns of the preservation community are primarily focused on the sanctuary, the bell tower, the staircase, um, the 1847 portion um, of this building. Um, All right, repeat that again. The, the, the entire structure is on the National Registry? Yes, sir. And on the local re Alabama registry? And uh, it is locally designated by the city of Montgomery. By the city. Right. It is not on the Alabama register. Okay. But, it, but it's in the Perry Street Historic District um, in the national register. But the local designation is the only designation that has any regulatory authority in this case, unless they take federal money, which they can't. Um, it, we're, the ARB is the only thing standing between them and a bulldozer. Oh, well, the, go ahead, but the fact that to me that it is a, in the district and it's right. locally designated makes me even more concerned about it. Yeah. And um, By this body. By this body, right. Yeah, we, right. we nominated to the city council of the city of Montgomery to designate it because of its importance. Then we stand. Pardon? Then we stand. Stand? We, st we took a stand and said, please preserve it. Um, we stand on Speaking that. to your I, microphone. I'm please. sorry. Yeah. I, it, to me, I'm like Mr. Long. It, it, we've already said we want it preserved. I, I, I think we recognize the significance. And I think it would take more affirmative action of the board through a resolution to say, First Baptist, preserve it, don't. <clears throat> Don't demolish it. Right. Well, I'm ready to put that resolution on the floor after what I just heard. Me too. Mm -hmm. I, I'm more, if, if the ARB, if you, they are not going to take action uh, at their next meeting due to a deficiency. I don't, I don't know that. 
I would prefer to, to hear that. from First Baptist and have invite them to come well said. here. Well said. And here. we asked the ARB to delay any action until we got here from First Baptist. Um, the, I understand. Only, I believe only... it's historically significant, but we've got. I, I'd love to talk to them. We cannot have that discussion until June, and that is only if you all want to push off the, what I had scheduled with the building departments, talk about vacant properties, um, sure and I've already given, I've given up this space for June. Can't we call a special meeting? I do not have time to, to be, be in teaching class for the next five weeks and meetings and I'm tied up on Thursdays, I don't know when we would have a special meeting to discuss it where I could actually be there. Are you at the, you're at the, are you at the ARB? Mm -hmm. I am. What, what, what date and time do they meet? Fourth Tuesday. It'll at be the what 23rd time? at 530. Could we meet concurrently or, or before them? Can I suggest this alternative to the commission? Sure. Um, they have, First Baptist has written a letter, uh, a fairly thorough letter, I believe it's two pages. We have a copy of that. Um, if there are such scheduling conflicts, we can provide you with that letter. It'll answer all the questions you have. This is the letter that they have, I've heard it from their mouths on a several occasions, um, but this is the letter that they've also provided to their membership um, to support this. Pardon, have it. pardon my language and directness, yeah. but I am an attorney. Are they yeah. hell bent on tearing it down? Yeah. 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 It seems like it. And they're not open to an alternative to, that preserves the sanctuary? Um, in our discussions with, uh, with, with Jay and with the church, um, we have provided a handful of alternatives uh, from turning the, the building over to a leaser who would be responsible for the maintenance, but the church maintains ownership. They were not supportive of that. To outright selling the building back to the Presbyterians, we had an, a, an opportunity to make that happen. They did not want to do that. Um, and then lastly, adaptive reuse, which to me seems to be the most reasonable mm -hmm. option. Uh, and, and even to find it you know, down to a, not even the entirety of the sanctuary, but what we can define as the 1847 sanctuary through significant research. Um, and that seems to be the only thing that they'll even entertain. Uh, but at the same time, you know, Jay, Reverend Wolf basically told us that if we wanted to do something about it, then we would have to work with their architect. Um, and we're kind of in the process of doing that right now, but at the same time, we do would like to have more public support than what we've got. When you say we, do you mean landmark? Uh, excuse me, I'm a member of this. state. No, 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 I'm not here in a, an official capacity for the Alabama Historical the Commission. Friends of the I'm, I'm here for the Friends of First Presbyterian and, and with Landmarks Foundation. Excuse me, I didn't, I'm sorry that I did not clarify that earlier. Well, I'm, I'm maybe with Brian. There may be, while we don't necessarily have to put a resolution on the floor at this time, we can certainly do as he suggests and make a request by motion to the ARB that they not uh, approve this matter until we have time to, because of its historical you know, significance, that they not approve this matter until we have time to review uh, review the matter and to uh, consult with them about it. I'd just like to extend an invitation <clears throat> to the First Baptist to come talk to us whenever that, <clears throat> that opportunity may be. And then definitely if they refuse to talk to us, we pass the resolution, or pass a resolution, but I really would like to hear from them. There's two sides to every story. And, you know, I'd I agree. The question is, can we do that before the ARB mm. meeting? Mm -hmm. I mean, they will, they will make the petition at the ARB meeting. They will state their case at that point as well. ARB can table it, right? They can. Well, I, if we do anything tonight, it would ask that we communicate to the <laughs> ARB that we would like to extend an opportunity to First Baptist to come speak to us and that they respectfully, we respectfully ask they table the matter until such time 
as we could have a conversation with First Baptist Church. And Christian, you say the uh, <clears throat> next meeting of the ARB is the fourth Thursday. Fourth this Tuesday, month? It's, the, it's April 23rd at okay. 530. Okay. The problem is if we were to go talk to the ARB or try to do something that night, if there were any of us that constituted a quorum, we would have to have a notice of a, right. a, a meeting <laughs> under the, the law. We, we can do that. Okay. I think for special called meetings, is it seven days? Right. No, we can post 24 hours, 24 hours in, the on the, in, in, the, in the building if y'all think you're going to convene. I'd like to hold that in my back pocket to do it that night so that we could all be there mm -hmm. and communicate. But this sounds serious enough that it merits special attention. Well said. I agree. What would be the reaction of the ARB if we right. just show up there for a special meeting without sort of? No, I, I think Christy could coordinate this yeah, with them. Yeah, I mean, I, I tried to let the chair know when we've got issues, so no. As she said, surprised. we're cousins. <laughs> yeah. This is family. <laughs> I mean, in some communities, you all are the same body. We just, right. being I a bigger so. community, have the luxury of letting them review changes and letting you all do the <clears throat> designation and, and education piece of it. But don't, doesn't this body create the design review for the ARB to apply? Yes, it's supposed to, yes. Yes. So the HPC was technically responsible for the guidelines, the yeah. guidelines concerning demolition. So let's be. Who's had an ARB? Elizabeth Brown. Can we, is there anybody, can we designate a point person for the board to, 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 to work with you on this? And, and is there anybody? Well, what, what work do you think we need to do? Or do you be our point person? No, I'm just, I'm asking. I mean, if it's just to a matter To accomplish of... these goals, to see if we could coordinate with ARB to, 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 to listen, for us to hear from First Baptist before we pass any resolutions. Or before they pass them. And before right. they do anything. Right. Yeah. To slow it down. Right. So in, in, in other words, Chris, is there any way that we can uh, um, divert what's going on, divert the process, to slow it down, yeah. that, derail? I mean, that, that's up to the ARB. Um, as with this evening, you know, I let Dr. Bailey know that there may be some folks here who would like to address the body. At the ARB right. meeting, it's a little different. Um, they will allow 10 minutes for the petitioner, and then they will allow 10 minutes for comments. And generally, if there is opposition to a project, we recommend that people get together and not just keep repeating the same things and make a kind of blanket presentation. So it could be showing this PowerPoint. It could be whatever. But I could also ask the chair to recognize the HPC if you all want to say that, be you know, I, I'm here to say that we at our last meeting passed a motion that we would like the ARB to delay this um, decision until such time as First Baptist can come and meet with our body to talk about their plans and concerns for the building or whatever y'all want to say. Um, I mean, we can make that happen. Is everybody in tune with what we are saying? Yes. I like that approach. A motion, show up and go forward. So, so right. just to clarify, Mr. Chairman, what, okay, what, what are we doing and when? Because we're kicking around a lot of good ideas. I'm just trying to get an understanding of when, right. what is happening. The when. last point Christy made that we would just uh, adopt a resolution in which we asked the ARB to sit tight for just a little while so that we can hear from somebody from First Baptist, in other words, another, the other side of the issue before we do anything and before the ARB does anything. Okay. Is everybody? And, and oh, that's do that good. and not show up at the meeting? Is that, and you would just communicate it or what are you saying? No, I think you should be there. I well, think that's we why I thought we had a designated yeah. point person who's there and well, can relay in person our I think, and that's why I was suggesting that I could ask that outside of that 10 minute box that the chair recognize a representative from 
the HPC because y'all don't rear your heads very often. Actually, I've never seen y'all rear your heads at all since I've been doing this. So, it, I mean, I'm just saying that it is a rare occasion where this body has shown up and said, we support let's that stop body. the train and talk about this. Well, this so, is a worthwhile project. Well, well in terms of point person or persons, um, uh, uh, Mr. Mann and Mr. Long have made especially um, clear arguments tonight. And they are attorneys. I mean, and they are attorneys and can speak <laughs> that language. And we'll come and support you. And I will certainly be there. I but I think you two have made very forceful arguments. Mm -hmm. They have at least That's resonated right. with me anyway. Well, lawyers don't mind doing it, but it, uh, the chairman is... I think that would also be a good choice. ...would be the better choice. Let's, let's, let's do this so that we can uh, bring this to a head. If this body desires that the chairperson of this commission appear at the ARB to uh, advance our cause, we can do that. And we would just ask some other commissioners to attend the meeting that night right. to let them know that the chair does not stand along on the issue. Exactly. Uh, if you see what we're saying, yes. uh, we can go in and adopt that. Um, is everybody on board what we're yes. saying? Yes, That's sir. the first point we want to make. Yeah. Yes, sir. Christy, did you um, um, insinuate, I mean, is it appropriate to show this PowerPoint? I'm saying that it's possible that as part of a 10 minute type as, response yeah. to the petition, mm -hmm. that something like this could be done if it was tightened up. Right. Right. And see, the only thing that we would be doing we is asking them to delay. Right. Exactly. That's the only thing we would be doing. We're not asking them to vote against. Right. We're just asking them to delay. For some uh, mediation. Yes. You know, I, 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 this just feels kind of like in lawyer what the circle is what we call ex parte. And uh, it's one-sided. Right. Yes, I understand your argument. But in fairness, I'd like to hear why and, and hear them defend their decision to destroy the entire thing. I mean, not that we have any authority, not that they have to come kiss the ring, but before we take the only <laughs> action we can take, which is pass exactly. a resolution, I'd really like to uh, hear from them. Well, I, I agree with that, but it's also a principle called status quo, meaning after they approve it, it's too late. <laughs> so we want to try to maintain sure. what the status quo without approval and give us time to, to look at it. Okay. Well, that's why I asked about a, meeting, a special called meeting. If, if, if we need to get, if nobody will talk to us, then we necessarily will feel the need and be compelled to move forward with a resolution. Yeah. But we have time. Yeah. I, there is one Monday and two Fridays between now and then that I could do it. Between and one when? of those Friday is Good Friday, and I'm not going to be here for Good Friday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't know when the opportunity, unless we did it at lunchtime, unless we did a, a special call meeting at noon, yeah, that would work. if we could find the space and they agreed to come. I'll be there. You just tell us when and where. But, I mean, we would have to have a quorum of y'all show up, or it's going to look really bad. No, yeah, I do, no, no, no. as long as I don't have court. But uh, we should cross that bridge when we get there. I would like to put a motion on the floor, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the chair would now entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman. I think we have, yeah. Mr. And, Chairman. Yes. Before you do that motion, I'm Cruz Reeves. I'm a contractor have been for 53 years here in Montgomery a builder remodeler restorer recently retired though um, I sit on the planning commission and I'm president of Midtown Montgomery Neighborhood Alliance and this church sits within our boundaries and even if it didn't fit in our boundaries I am totally against demolition of this sanctuary and we have a meeting Thursday night. I'm, this is going to be part of our agenda. I had no idea this was going to be talked about tonight, but this is absurd in my opinion. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and I usually come to the ARB. I'll be here. And I'm going to try to get other people down here. We'll have four. There's strength in numbers, believe me. Yes, there is. What's that? <laughs> I just wanted to say that before you went any further. Sure. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And, and I think it's important to note that nobody is discounting 
that the church has needs that aren't entirely being met with this facility. And I don't think anyone is trying to suggest that they shouldn't find a way to accommodate their programs. Um, I think it's just a hope that um, maybe a, a, a good rethink is in order mm -hmm. to try to preserve, mm -hmm. you know, we, we have lost so much downtown mm -hmm. um, to preserve some of our oldest remaining streetscape. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yes, ma'am. I think the next slide shows you the adaptive reuse that is really right. the piece de resistance, if you want to. This is a Manhattan church that has created an open space within their walls. And look That's what they've beautiful. done. And we just feel like it's eminently doable here. <laughs> yeah. I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> eminently doable. The chair would not entertain that motion. I make a motion that the chairman of the uh, HPC appear at the next meeting, which is the April ARB meeting, um, and express the concern of the commission regarding the planned demolition of the First Presbyterian Church on Adams Avenue, and request the ARB to delay any action on um, the application until the HPC has an opportunity to hear from both sides uh, regarding uh, the plans and how it would affect this historic church. Is that a second? I second. Second. Any <laughs> readiness? All those in favor, let it be known by a show of hands. Unanimous, Paul. All right. Um, now, what we are saying, the chairperson <clears throat> will attend that meeting, make that pitch, and we are encouraging the other commissioners to attend also so they can see what the gentleman just referred to as a show of force. Yes. That we're just not the chairman and everybody else is either intimidated or busy or whatever the case might be, that uh, we will attend that session and make a pointed argument and not a timid stance. I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So, all, um, it's, it's carried unanimously. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. And what's Thank the you. date of this April, meeting? April, April 23rd. 20th. I will email all of you. Good. And that's um, at 5.30, right, Christian? Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll make sure you all... I'll, when the agenda goes out Friday. It's not complete yet, but once it is available on the website, I'll send you all the link. But if more than um, five of us go, we have a problem, right? I will. I will just go ahead and advertise it as though y'all are going to be there, and we will be covered. Easy okay. Enough. Okay. Well, right. I mean, we'll just handle it that way. Okay. Um, well, and if this presentation is shown, it's sort of that's kind of what we do. <laughs> you know, yeah, the educational component. Exactly, uh, it is. Um, but when I send you, when we get it up on the website, hopefully Friday, we'll see, um, there will be a link that includes the plans that have been submitted that show right. the demolition section by section on the footprint and also the proposed replacement. That's good. Okay. Okay. All right. That's good. Uh, Dr. Dr. Pointer, you want to say something else? Dr. Bailey, if I may, uh, I'd like to submit these uh, four pages that I mentioned earlier, the letter from uh, Dick Hudgens, and just very brief information sure. um, about Old First Presbyterian. I'll give it to your staff. And I want to express my appreciation to you and to the Historic Preservation Commission for the opportunity to um, bring this concern uh, to this body. We're very grateful for your consideration. Um, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. And let me encourage um, the other members of this commission to drive by uh, First Presbyterian at your earliest convenience to get just get a feel for it. Mm -hmm. And if you have a couple of uh, minutes to get out of your vehicle and just walk the grounds as much as possible mm -hmm. just to get a feel before April 23rd so that you can uh, really get a feel for what we 
want to uh, advocate at that meeting. Okay? Thank you very much. Uh, are they leaving some of the things that we saw, the pictures and all? Uh, can we get a set of those? I, I have that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there anyone else in the audience before we uh, move forward who had planned to say something and you feel as if I've overlooked you or whatever the case might be? Anyone else? Okay. Thank you so much. Revamping a historic sign program? No. Um, we table that until okay, the summer that. time. <laughs> <All right. laughs> preservation leadership. We've got some client. more shows to do. It's going great. Dr. Bailey gave a great presentation. Oh. Yay. And uh, we expect uh, a good turnout tomorrow night at 5.30 at Huntington College. People Christy, want to graduate. The Christy's going to rock it. She's going to talk about uh, <laughs> some fun things. But, um, yeah. That's and we, we were able to um, film the first class, oh, and we should be good. able to get the equipment again tomorrow now that we know how to set it up. And we've been told, like I have a PowerPoint, that what they can do in post-production is instead of having to focus on the screen, is that they will come in and they will insert slides into the video itself. So. Um, they're going to clean it up and make it look professional, oh, and eventually we'll get it up on the city's oh, YouTube channel. Oh, I see. So the presentation tomorrow night will go online then? <coughs> eventually, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. So. There's a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. good. Okay. Oh, this is and, and we'd like to also applaud the uh, working members of that committee also. Uh, yes. We thank you for doing an excellent job uh, regarding the site. Huntington College Flowers Hall, uh, centrally located, and uh, the attendance was magnificent it last was. week. It really That's was. We, we appreciate all That's of excellent. that. Thank, Thank you so much, good. and we look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow afternoon, 5:30, Huntington College Flowers Hall, 2019 awards. We are coming right along. Uh, plaques, plaques have been ordered. Um, you all have a copy of a draft of the program. Yes. Um, because Let's we actually play. did have, yay, multiple submissions Ooh. this year. Um, <laughs> we are going to propose doing the awards yeah. program more like the Oscars That's and true. have a presentation that, that talks about all of the nominees first and then give Dr. Bailey some envelopes to open <laughs> to announce the winners and hand out awards if that's agreeable. I don't, I don't know how else to handle it and not, and not have people. I want everybody to have their, their project shown, and then they can sit there and wonder <laughs> if their name's in the envelope That sounds really and good. And build up the anticipation. So we, we've got plaques um, for projects that had multiple parties that um, contributed. We decided to, that the property owner would get the plaque. And then if there's like a contractor or architect or something involved, we're going to do certificates mm -hmm. to go that everyone's going to get something that's involved with a project that receives an award. They're just not all going to get plaques because we can't afford that. So, but they'll yeah. still have something they can hang on their wall. Uh, feedback, feedback regarding Christian's suggestion. Right. Who makes the decision on these? A committee. We had a committee, and two of us were there, so we <laughs> had to pick them, and we did. So. And we did. Y'all um, did. That picks the winners. Y'all, yes. Okay. The committee of two. Well, mm -hmm. it was a committee. Four of were four, invited, but um, mm -hmm. but it, it, we had to do it to get the stuff ordered, mm -hmm. so yeah. we did it, and y'all get to be surprised. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other comment? Okay. Good. Preservation Month resolution. It's in your agenda packet toward mm -hmm. the back. It is the same resolution we had last year, except it has this year's dates on it. And I scribbled all over mine because I started making it. I move it. that we adopt the resolution as written. I, I is that a second? It's up to us. Is it up to us? I think second. Brian's ready to go. Uh, any unreadiness? No. Was it seconded? Yes. Who seconded? Second. <laughs> Any unreadiness? No. <laughs> we don't want to run it by anybody. Any unreadiness? If it's the same as last year, it's the same, surely it's except fine. Except I, cha I changed right. the dates. Yeah. It's been moving second. All those in favor, let it be known by a show of hands. Unanimous. Thank Do you so much. Dr. Bailey, we have an official version for you to sign after sure. the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, is there a presentation date with the mayor and the city council like there was last year? 
it did, didn't, didn't that? We are hoping that that will be May 7th. Uh, okay, um, that's right. I have not gotten confirmation okay. on whether or not someone from the mayor's office will do a welcome for the awards program. Okay. Um, Mac McLeod, who's the chief of staff, had indicated that I said last year the mayor was asking for a proclamation and we're all looking at each other going, it's a proclamation. We thought the resolution was it, that um, Michael Bridell is apparently the king of proclamation, so I'm going to get with him oh, okay. and see if he can help us have both. But we should probably plan to be at that city council on the 7th, too. Uh, yes. Okay. And hopefully nothing strange will happen this year like it did last year. Yes. Okay, did everybody hear that? You know. We should plan to, to attend the city council meeting on the 7th of May. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Krista, do you have anything else? I mean, I'm sorry, update on the vacant property and revitalization discussion. We talked about that last month. That you all wanted to get more information from the building department mm -hmm. on the, um, there, because there's been a lot of press about the software they're going to be using to track vacant property. Um, Thomas Carr is going to meet with us. We're going to do it as a round table in the old council chamber so it's a little easier to have a discussion. <coughs> and so you can ask him, he'll, well, he'll tell you about what their plans are and you can ask them whatever you want. Is and, this in um, June? Mm -hmm. That'll be the June meeting. June that is a public meeting too, right? It is a public meeting. So yes. maybe we could send out, I mean, you'll do your thing, but maybe we could send out through the neighborhood coalition too. Yeah. If I mean, it's, to it's a public here. hearing, so right. it'll, it'll just this be in a different space. Okay. So it's a little easier to have a discussion. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Anybody got anything going on you'd like to inform the body of? Yes, Dr. Bailey, um, yes. do you want a um, dedication of the Marianne Neely Park oh, in right. Old Cloverdale on College Street yes. um, as a past member of this body uh, on Sunday afternoon, April 28th at right. what time? I believe it's uh, 3 o'clock, but it could be 2, but it'll be at well advertised. Right, at, through Old Cloverdale. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. it'll be well advertised on College Street. And if you drive by now, you'll see the sign that says Marianne Neely right Park. There on College Street. We're talking about April 28th, which is a Sunday. If you have time, we'd appreciate if you drop by for the dedication of uh, that park in honor of our former member, uh, Mary Ann Neely. Uh, that's a much broader event than the rededication. There'll be a May Festival that day, the Old Cloverdale Association. We normally have a uh, May Queen, but this year we're having May Princes, I believe, that are Mary Ann Neely's grandchildren. Oh. I don't know if they're princesses, but they're maybe both, but uh, okay. may princes and princesses, grandchildren, Mary great and Neely, grandchildren. great grandchildren, something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And uh, they'll have the Maypole. Obviously, this is a commemoration of long ago May festivals at Huntington College. And what time is that? I imagine it oh, follows okay. the uh, rededication of okay. the park. All right. Okay. But we're inviting everyone to come out uh, May 28th, that's a Sunday, last Sunday in the month. And as I said, it should be well, well advertised, radio, television, and newspaper. Uh, but we invite you to come out. I, I will point it? out that I did inquire why we were having a May festival in April. And they indicated that the, the next available date in May would be the day of the Kentucky Derby. So that was not going to happen. <laughs> that's the first, yeah. First All right. Day. Anybody has anything else going on you'd like to inform the body of? Anybody? Chris, do you have any com comments as we leave? No, I will, I will get you all copies of um, what Michael left and agendas. Do you think it would be easier just to mail him a copy of all this stuff? To get it, or, or do you think we can, if we can get the agenda on the website in a timely fashion, I will send you the link. Otherwise, look for another packet in the mail with the agenda information and what Michael um, left. Okay. Let me just remind everybody, April 23rd for the ARB meeting at 530 and May 7th for the city council meeting. Oh, one, one, yes. One final thing. Yes, sir. On the preservation awards, can you send a letter to uh, Reverend uh, Handy? Mm -hmm. Uh, officially yes. with a copy of the program to remind him because that's what he wants <laughs> to get on his calendar <laughs> to make sure he's there. Yeah, and I, I, I will I have a comment for you after the meeting too okay. that made me, I saw something today that made me chuckle. No. <laughs> All right. Any, anything else? 
Nothing being said is about dreams.